And now, stay tuned for the program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Whistler. For Sunday evening listening pleasure, the signal to listen for is this whistle that identifies the Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Final Decree. As the two hunters made their way along the base of the canyon, neither was aware of the figure standing well hidden in the trees on the ridge above them. When Gordon Weller reached the small creek, he turned, looked back at his friend Dr. Perryman puffing up the path behind him. Gordon grinned and picked his way across the creek and started up the mountain. As he circled a huge boulder and came into a clearing, at the sound, Dr. Perryman stopped suddenly. An expression of horror crossed his face as he saw Gordon Weller stretched out on the path before him. Gordon! Gordon! Are you hurt? No. No, I I guess I'm all right, Doc. Great Scott, you gave me quite a jolt. Here, now let me give you a hand. Thanks. Uh, thanks. I heard the shot. I saw you fall. I, I just stumbled, that's all. Lucky thing I did. What? Look at that tree there. That branch. Still swaying. A bullet must have nicked it. Good Lord. Shot came from somewhere up along that ridge. Crazy fool. I tell you, Gordon, some of these idiots who go hunting... I have a good mind to chase up there after whoever did this. And... No, never mind, Doc. I, I... Well, I just like to go up there and give him a piece of my mind, by George. I... Say, you don't suppose it could be anyone in our party, do you? Uh, no, I don't think so. They... They're on the other side of the mountain. Hmm. That shot could have killed you, Gordon, if you hadn't stumbled what you did. Sure, sure. Come along, let's go back to the lodge. But doggone, I'd oh, like to don't go. get excited. It, it was just an accident. But you know it wasn't an accident, don't you, Gordon? It was another attempt on your life. You're certain of that. And you didn't tell your friend, Dr. Perryman, that a split second before the shot was fired... You caught a glimpse of reflected light high on the ridge. The rays of the sun striking a rifle barrel, perhaps. And instantly, you dropped to the ground. Hours later, back at your lodge high in the mountains, all your guests are assembled in the huge living room before the massive stone fireplace. The Farleys, Bill Kenny and his new wife, Betty. The Wilsons, Dr. Perryman. And, of course, your wife, Joyce. You enjoy entertaining, don't you, Gordon? The smart parties in town. The weekends here at your fashionable mountain lodge. Yes, you like having your friends around. The feeling of security that goes with it. I tell you, Joyce, this husband of yours is lucky to be alive. Gordy leads a charmed life, didn't you know? Nothing could ever happen to him. Well, that was well, a close say, one, all right. Charmed, charmed like Joyce? Say. Perhaps it's just that I'm... Careful. Say, who do you suppose that fool was up there on the ridge? Didn't know there was anyone else hunting in this neighborhood outside of our own little group. Didn't well, see anyone. I mean, say, Joyce, you were over there on the ridge for a while. Did you see anyone? No, I didn't, Betty. Not a soul. I'm telling you, it's getting to be quite dangerous up around this neck of the woods. Isn't a season goes by without somebody getting killed. I certainly hope something can be done about it. Any suggestions, Doc? Like bulletproof suits of armor for all hunters? Oh, wonderful <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, now, perhaps that wouldn't be such a bad idea. Oh, no. <laughs> I'd like that idea. Billy, uh, wasn't a friend of yours killed up here last year, Martin, um... Oh, you know, uh, uh Martin Benson. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right, honey. 
Well, uh, <clears throat> are we all just going to stand here holding our drinks? Why don't we... Uh, uh, yes, uh, toast, huh? To our host and hostess, the happiest married couple I know. Oh, Billy. Hey, outside of us, baby. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to the wellers, then. Joyce and Gordy. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Uh, yeah. 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 Now, I'd like to drink to you, darling. <laughs> to you and your miraculous escape from death. Thanks, Joyce. You were lucky, weren't you, Gordy? Not lucky, darling. As I said before, just careful. You watch Joyce as she smiles at you and then turns and walks away and mingles with the guests. A quarter of an hour later, you manage to slip away, hurry into your den, to the cabinet where you keep your gun collection. Opening it, you remove a dueling pistol. It takes only a few minutes for what you have to do. Then you step out on the terrace and stroll casually along the flagstone walk, puffing quietly on a cigarette. Then voices from the garden reach you. How did I know? Sure, baby, sure. So you didn't know. But look, we don't mention the name Martin Benson around here. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just that Martin was Gordy's best friend. They were pretty close, and Martin's death sort of knocked Gordy for a loop, that's all. Okay, but from what I heard... And what have you heard... Well, Billy, maybe this Martin Benson wasn't such a good friend after all. What do you mean? Well, wasn't there some talk about Martin playing around with Joyce? And Gordy never knew about it. That's enough, baby. Well, that's what I heard, Billy. Okay, okay, forget it, Anne. So Gordy never found out, and it's just as well. Let's drop it. Okay. They've known all along, haven't they, Gordy? About your wife, Joyce, and your best friend, Martin Benson. But not once did they suspect that you were aware of that romance. That you were responsible for Martin's death. It had all been so simple getting rid of him, hadn't it? A hunting accident. Martin killed with his own gun. And there had never been any question about that, uh, accident. Never a question in anyone's mind, except Joyce. Somehow she knew, didn't she, Gordon, that you had killed Martin. The man she really loved. And she was going to make you pay for it with your own life. You knew long ago that you couldn't run away. She'd follow you to the ends of the earth. And you decided there was only one thing to do. Stay with Joyce and get rid of her before your luck ran out. That evening in your den, as your guests look over your gun collection. Hey, goodness, I've never seen so many guns in all my life. <laughs> oh, this is no, Betty. Gordy's got another room full in town. He's just mad about guns. Here's a new one I picked up a couple of weeks ago, Bill. How do you like it? Hey. Hey, that's a beaut. Real old dueling pistol, huh? Oh, boy. Let me see it, Billy. Hey, hey. Don't grab like that, baby. Oh, it sure is heavy. It isn't loaded, is it? (laughs) Oh, don't worry, Betty. Gordon's very careful about things like that. Oh, golly, I don't see how anybody could fire this. (laughs) You couldn't very well. Not the way you're holding it. Oh, why, Gordy? Here, I'll show you. You wrap your hand around it like this. Uh Uh-huh. That's it. And this finger goes around the trigger. Mm Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, Well, look at that. I hardly touched it. Well, that's what they call a hair trigger, baby. Clicks off just like that. I... Hey. What's the matter, Gordy? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, it's a good thing it wasn't loaded. Gee, it was pointed right at joy. Yeah, (laughs) As it was. Wasn't it, Gordon? Joyce. Darling, you're neglecting our guests. What are you doing out here on the terrace? Oh, I uh, just wanted a breath of air. Mm. We've all decided to run down to the village for a while. Want to come along? No, no thanks. I think I'll stay here if you don't mind. All right. We won't be long, darling. Don't get lost. Oh, uh, by the way, Gordon. Yes? I thought you were the careful type. What do you mean? Do you generally keep loaded pistols in your collection? Of course not. That dueling pistol you were showing Betty a little while ago, it was loaded. What? That is, it was when I first looked at it before dinner. I took the bullets out of it then. Good thing I did. I might have been killed. I guess this is your lucky day, too. Yes. We've both been lucky today, haven't we, darling? I wonder whose luck will run out. First. 
The pattern is clear, isn't it, Gordon? For the struggle between you and your wife, Joyce. When Martin Benson died, it didn't end anything. Rather, it was the beginning of the quiet tension, the terror. You knew long ago that there would be no running away. A divorce from Joyce wouldn't settle anything. She'd follow you anywhere. She wants to kill you, doesn't she, Gordon? Somewhere, somehow, someday, she'll kill you. If you don't kill her first. It's been touch and go for so long now, hasn't it? Between two would-be killers who appear to everyone else as a comfortably, happily married couple. But now another way occurs to you, Gordon. A frame-up against Joyce. Something to get her out of the way. If only you can make it look as if she tried to kill you. Give her the opportunity and then take advantage of it. You start to set this up in a conversation with your good friend, Dr. Perryman. Oh, come now, my boy. The idea that someone is actually trying to kill you is ridiculous. Fantastic. I don't think so, Doc. And you wouldn't either in my position. But, well, you were along right behind me when that shot came whistling out of nowhere on the ridge yesterday. Of course. A careless hunter. An accident. You said so yourself. Yes, but I've been thinking about it, Doc. Thinking about some other accidents, too. What? You remember several months back on the lake, my motorboat, the explosion? I was lucky to get out of it alive. Well, yes. Then a month ago, coming down the ridge road, my car suddenly going out of control. (laughs) Hitting that telephone pole was the only thing that saved me from going over. The road is dangerous. Hairpin curves and the way you drive. (laughs) Yeah, fortunately, I wasn't speeding. See here, Gordon. Do you mean to tell me that... Yes. Then yesterday in the canyon. But who, Gordon? Why? I I don't know. Who would want to kill you? You're not disliked. Your friends, your wife, all loyal, devoted. I wonder, Doc. I wish I could believe that all the way. You can, Gordon. You should. (laughs) Well, I'll try, of course. I'm telling you all this because, well, because of the kind of a friend you've been. I wish you'd remember this conversation, Doc. Frankly, I'm worried. Certainly, I'll remember. I'll keep my eyes open, naturally. But you don't believe such things are possible. No, I I, I didn't say that. Now, look, let's stop this talk, Gordon. You've got me worried now. And that's all you want for the moment, isn't it, Gordon? To have Dr. Perryman concerned. Later, his suspicions will be easily aroused. Suspicions against Joyce. Because of what you're going to do. You wait now, casting around in your mind for some plan of action. The frame. It suggests itself a few days later at the lodge. Just a small thing. Involving an open gas jet on a gas heater. Gordon. Gordon, are you all right? Betty, shut that thing off. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, what is this? What's wrong? I... Say, isn't that gas I smell? You bet it is. You better have something done about this jet. It's much too loose. Something must have fallen against it. What's happening? Oh. What's the excitement, Bill? Oh, it isn't anything. Oh, yes, it is, Doc. Your Gordon was asleep here in the chair, and that gas jet was open. Oh. How do you suppose... Well, it's very loose. Could have been an accident. Oh, it's right. dangerous. Kill now, let's stop worrying about it. Just an accident. Don't you think so, Doc? Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Well, what's the matter, darling? You, you're all right. Sure. We better have this heater fixed. Uh, that's all. It's, well, the jet's loose. Really? I can't understand it. Well, we must have it attended to right away. Yes. You better, Joyce. <laughs> The look in Joyce's eyes is what you want, isn't it, Gordon? She isn't thinking of having the gas jet fixed. Not at all. She's thinking of what a convenient way this could be. After all, the guests have seen it. Yes, very convenient. And you smile to yourself, deciding that you'll help her along with her plan. The following evening, you put it all in motion. It begins as your guests prepare to leave for a party at a neighboring lodge. Look, I, I'm sorry to back out at the last minute this way, but I've got a headache. A bad one. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. I'd better stay here. Just take it easy. Get some rest. Oh, well, what about you, Joyce? Coming? Oh, of course, Betty. That isn't it. Gordy, he'd rather I stay here. No, there's no need for that, Joyce. I'll be all right. You run along. You rest, then. Maybe a little nap, hmm? Be you good? Yes. Yes, I'll, uh, stretch out in the den. Well, come on, kids, let's go. Uh, you want to come along in our car, Joyce? Uh, no, no, I'll take mine. I have some things to get in the village first. You run along. I'll join you at the Jellisons later. Okay. Let's away! <laughs> You watch them as they leave. Your guest and Joyce. A moment later, Bill Sedan roars past the lodge, starts down the grade. Joyce's neat little convertible right behind her. She's up to something, isn't she, Gordon? The way she suggested that you rest so all of them could hear. You wait quietly in the den, wait for Joyce to come back. As you know, she will. And then... In here, Joyce. You... You don't seem surprised, darling. That you came back? No, I knew you'd be back. I thought perhaps you'd change your mind about going over to the Jellisons. I only wanted to see if... I still have my headache. Would a drink help? <laughs> Why, how thoughtful of you, dear. Yes, it, it might help very nicely. Well, I'll fix a couple. Let me... No. No trouble, darling. Thanks. You know, Gordy... Sometimes you're hard to figure out. Oh? And you're not at all. That sounds okay. Merely appraising. Joyce. Yes? What sort of sleeping pills did you pick up in the village? Sleeping pills? Whatever are you talking about? Here, your drink. Joyce, you're getting careless. Clumsy, am I? You wouldn't want to exchange drinks now, would you? Certainly. Here. Satisfied? <laughs> you anticipated that one, of course. Did I? Let's stop the game, Joyce. I know what you're up to. What am I up to? You want to put me to sleep. Fix it so I'm just sitting here, resting, as you put it. Then somehow the gas jet finds its way on again, and I'm the unsuspecting accident victim. No one will know that you ever came back here from the village. You went directly over to the Jellison's party. You have it all figured out, don't you? Yes, and it won't work. I guess not. I wouldn't expect such a careless, clumsy sand of words. Well, cheers. Really afraid, aren't you, Gordon? Of the drink, yes. But not of you. I'm not afraid of you anymore, Joyce. Not in the least. It sounds ominous. I might as well tell you how ominous. I intend to take an overdose of sleeping pills and turn on the gas. Suicide? How nice of you, Gordon. Not suicide. Attempted murder. What are you talking about? You do have a box of sleeping tablets in your purse, don't you, Joyce? I... Of course. I'll only borrow a few. Put the box back in your purse after I've seen you on your way. You're out of your mind. Not quite. But it has to look good, Joyce. Your attempt on my life. You're a fool, Gordon. I'm afraid we'll both have to check our plan for a while. Not me, Joyce. But you will. You see, in a few minutes, you're going to have an accident. Your car is going off the road with you at the wheel. I see. And I'll be found that way with the box of sleeping tablets in my purse. The ones they'll believe you slipped into my drink. Oh, I fully intend to take them, you know. Then just at the right moment... I'll call the hospital. They'll find me here, unconscious, the gas on. But they'll find me just in time. After my car accident, you mean? That's right, Joyce. <laughs> you have been thinking overtime, haven't you? You know, Joyce, you're forcing me to do this. Am I? If you'd only tried to understand. I understand. Understand murder? There was no other way. You could have given me a divorce when I asked for it. I didn't want a divorce. You knew I loved Martin. You knew, I thought you knew you did. Thought I did. You knew I did. You knew I loved him. With everything I had. That's why you killed him and made it look like a hunting accident. But you didn't get away with it, Gordon. You cheated the law, but you're going to pay just the same. I'll make sure of that. I'm sorry, Joyce. I hate the idea of punching that beautiful jaw, but you leave me no choice. <laughs> Thank you.
You carry the unconscious Joyce down to her car, place her on the front seat next to you. Then you start down the ridge road. And as you reach a sharp curve, you leap clear. Goodbye, Joyce. Goodbye for good. Back at the lodge, you pour yourself another drink. Dissolve the sleeping tablets in it. Then you drink. You step over to the gas jet on the heater and turn it on. Sitting in the big easy chair, the telephone at your elbow, you wait. The minutes tick by. You find yourself becoming drowsy. Then you're sinking into a warm, black fog. married couple I know. You shake your head. Try to clear the haze from your mind. I wonder whose luck will run out first, darling. You're breathing heavily now. The walls are closing in on you. Gordon was asleep in the chair. The gas was on. The room seems to be swaying beneath you. The black fog sweeps in again. And you fight to keep your eyes open. Now, Gordon, now is the time. You can't wait another moment. You reach for the telephone. It's going to be close, isn't it, Gordon? Everything's going just the way you planned it. Two, five, seven. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. The small crowd around the wrecked car included the party guests. Only Dr. Perryman wasn't there as Joyce's lifeless body was lifted from the crumbled mass of glass and metal. The guests were shocked, spoke in low, nervous tones to one another, horrified by what had happened in the space of a few hours. Presently, a police car returned to the scene. Dr. Perryman and the sheriff stepped out and hurried down the path to join the others. Doc. Doc, I thought you went up to get Gordon. Where is... Up at the lodge, Bill. Well? Gordon's dead, but... What did you say, Sheriff? Accident, I guess. The gas was turned down in his den, where we found him. Rolled out on the floor. His hand still clutching the telephone. He must have tried to phone for help, Bill. But he didn't have a chance. What do you mean? The telephone lines were down. When Joyce's car crashed down the bank, it knocked over a telephone pole and all the phone lines along with it. That whistle be your signal for the Swistler each Sunday night at the same time. Featured in tonight's story were John Hoyt and Betty Lou Gerson. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone and Adrian John Doe. Music by Wilbur Hatch.